The second umbilical now separating from the tower, marking less than 15 seconds. The engine's igniting. Ramping up. And liftoff. The year in space starts now. Kelly, Kornienko, and Padaka on their way towards the International Space Station. Getting good first stage performance. The Soyuz delivering about 930,000 pounds of thrust through its four strap on boosters and single engine. Getting reports, nominal operation, the first stage measuring 68 feet in length and 24 feet in diameter, burning liquid fuel for the first two minutes and six seconds into the flight. Radially, copy. 40 seconds into the flight, stabilization is stable. Continuing to get views from the cabin inside, as you heard, NASA astronaut Reed Wiseman, a fairly f smooth flight into orbit for these crew members. 60 seconds. Speech, your and roll are all nominal. The crew looking good inside. Again, Padalka in the center, Kornienko in the top of your screen. Getting a look now at NASA astronaut Scott Kelly there in the right seat. Giving a big thumbs up. 200 seconds into the flight. The thrusters of the second stage are functioning nominally. Copy. Everything is fine on board. Uh, we are feeling good. that's a good sign for the man who brought to the year Yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter, right? That's cool. Should I put 2016? Are <laughs> 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 you good? Are we good? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
А потом с этими приезжают по подоле. Сейчас на руководство будет приезжать. Все то же самое. Да. Ну, с тобой договорились. Сначала полгода. Потом, наверное, вы еще раз зайдете. Да. Господа, встали. Пока, да. Пока, да. Пока, да. Пока, да. Пока, да. Пока,
Mike Suffredini, ISS Program Manager. Mike, a year in space underway for Scott Kelly and Mikhail Kornienko. Your reaction to the launch? Well, as always, the launch is fantastic to watch. Uh, even with the cloud cover, it makes the whole pad glow. So at nighttime, it's a spectacular sight. But I think um, on the International Space Station, we have been working for some time to do the necessary studies to, to convince ourselves we know how to mitigate the deleterious effects of space. And uh, I think this is the most overt uh, step that we've taken where everybody can kind of think about the fact this is a year in space. We're kind of taking a step, six months to a year, and then a year to a year and a half. We're making our steps towards how long we have to be in space to go to Mars. And so, uh, of course, this is a, a major step for us, a major moment, uh, but it, it really highlights uh, that space station is a necessary step towards exploration, the first step towards exploration. Mike, much has been made over the last weeks and months about uh, Kelly and Kornienko. How will they make it, a marathon versus a sprint? But from a programmatic standpoint, how do you as the program manager manage all of the traffic, all of the science that they'll encounter over the next year? Well, and that is a challenge. Uh, not only are we doing one year experiments on these uh, two gentlemen, uh, but we also have our full suite of six months experiments uh, going as well. In addition to that, for this particular period of time, we're reconfiguring the International Space Station for docking of the commercial crew vehicles, which is a major change. We're moving some elements around, adding docking ports. Uh, and so uh, it, it's, uh, it's a busy time. The crew time is very constrained. And so really the job of the program is to balance all those priorities while we continue to do the critical research we do and still get the, the, uh, the reconfiguration done. So it's a, it's a balancing act, but it's one we're very familiar with. And Mike, uh, a significant time for the International Space Station. These two guys are going to be flying over the 40th anniversary of Apollo Soyuz and the 15th anniversary of a permanent human occupancy on the station. How significant is that for the program and the steps that lie ahead? Well, when you think about Apollo Soyuz, it really was the first step in our cooperation with our Russian colleagues, and which laid the foundation for cooperation amongst many partners. So to me, the 40th anniversary is important. The 15th anniversary is not only the anniversary of 15 years of human presence on ISS, but I think it punctuates the Apollo Soyuz first step. And so I look at it as sort of a, a step towards our final destination, the idea that that we went from Apollo Soyuz to the International Space Station today. The International Space Station is really the first step in human exploration beyond low Earth orbit. And so uh, we've got at least 15 more years of ISS, and then the whole uh, international partnership, a international partnership, uh, will start moving forward. And this, to me, not only highlights our past and what we've done to date, but it smiles brightly on our, our uh, future going beyond low Earth orbit. Bill Gerstenmeyer, NASA's Associate Administrator for Human Exploration Operations. Bill, uh, thunderous launch to begin a year in space. Your thoughts about uh, the start of this marathon mission? 
again, just a, an amazing launch here. But then when I think about the year ahead, I, I think of it in a very different way. You know, we're, we kind of got used to the six month periods, but now to see this one year and to think about all the work that's gone into planning for the research, the uh, activities that the crew has planned on orbit is just exciting to, to see that get kicked off and see the teams get to execute all these plans they've put together. What will be, in your opinion, the most challenging aspect of these two guys spending a year together and doing all the work that lies ahead? Again, I think if I just look at the activities, there's just a tremendous amount of work planned for this year. You know, some of the investigations are very complicated where they're done partially on the U.S. segment, then they move over to the Russian segment for a portion of the activities, and then they come back to the U.S. segment. I mean, it's it's just uh, amazing to see how much work they're going to have to do during this year expedition. So I think the thing is, we, we used to think about 180 days being a marathon, and we had to really pace ourselves. When I think about this year expedition, we really need to pace ourselves and just make sure we're in it for the long haul and we can do things and move out at the right pace. But tremendous number of investigations. It'll be exciting to see them kind of get ticked off and to see the changes in the crew throughout the year. NASA Administrator Charles Bolden in Baikonur. Uh, sir, the um, one-year mission embarking with great interest around the world, an important mission, an intriguing flight. What is it that is inspirational and what is it that is so intriguing about an American and a Russian flying together for a year in space? I think uh, any time you get an American and a Russian doing something uh, to the successful extent that we have been doing now for more than 14 years with the International Space Station, it should be big news. It, it unfortunately is not the news it should be. Um, but the critical importance of this particular mission uh, with Scott and Mikhail as a team, it will be to show once again that when people come together with a common goal and a common objective, and this time it's to gather more information about the human body to help us on our path to Mars. Uh, when that happens, um, there is no limitation to what we can accomplish. So that's the lesson uh, of this crew and this mission. The uh, Soyuz crew patch for the crew shows marathon runners. <laughs> So not only for the crew itself, but for the entire NASA and Roscosmos family working together, how grueling is this going to be uh, to sustain uh, the capabilities for a year to make this a successful mission? Well, this is, it's, uh, the marathon is a, is a superb example or a superb description of this flight because that's exactly what the mission to Mars is. It's not a sprint. Uh, it is unlike anything we've done before. Uh, a lot of us have been not worrying, but but thinking for quite some time about what are the what are the, the the human challenges of a mission like this. And one of the ones that we've spent very little time doing anything with is what's the psychological impact. Uh, this will be the first time that we've had an American stay on orbit for a year. Uh, may not sound like a lot uh, to some people, but let me tell you, as a person who uh, who did nothing but camping trips during my time in the shuttle, uh, this is significant. And to move from six months to one year, we're going to see all kinds of things that are going to help us understand what the challenges are going to be for our crews as they venture off to Mars. So, and people should not lose sight of that fact. The International Space Station is our critical toehold to the rest of the solar system. Uh, it is, in fact, our stepping stone uh, to deep space exploration for humans. And it's the only facility that we have right now that gets us away from Earth, gets us into an environment where we can really see what the human body uh, undergoes in the microgravity environment of space, uh, where we can see what semi-isolation is like on the human uh, for long periods of time, and a year is a long period of time. So uh, it's a very important mission for us. Mark Kelly, uh, contrary to public belief, this really is Mark Kelly, not Scott Kelly, uh, without the mustache, uh, Mark. Uh, your brother Scott embarks on a mission like no other astronaut for the United States has ever embarked on. What do you think uh, his state of mind is as he begins the flight, and um, why is he the right guy for this job? You know, I had the press conference the other day with all the crew members, my brothers, you know, the, the crew, the prime crew and the backup crew. I thought Gennady Padalka said something interesting. And he said when he's in space, he wants to be home. And he was at, when he's at home, he wants to be in space. And I talked to my brother a little bit about that afterwards. And, you know, that's kind of the situation he 
feels he will fall into. I mean, right now he's really excited about this flight. He does realize that a year is a pretty substantial commitment. It's twice as long as what he's, his other long duration flight. Um, but you know, this is uh, a marathon and not a sprint. But I imagine at some point during the flight, he's gonna, he's gonna think about coming home. And you know, he doesn't know when that, if that's gonna be at four months or eight months, or you know, he can make it all the way to the end without you know, that, uh, that long, longing for getting back. Nobody knows him better than you, obviously. Um, you're military guys, so you're used to long stays away from home. Obviously, this has got to help, but this is a particularly uh, significant flight in terms of uh, what it's going, the toll it could take psychologically as well as physically. How do you think he's going to uh, respond to that? You know, not only, you know, being away from home for a long time, and, I, you know, there's an aspect of that that makes him somewhat suitable for this. But I think it's also focusing on a mission and an objective and understanding that there are things more important than you as an individual. So he certainly has that mindset. That's why he's doing this. Why, that's why he's volunteered for, you know, some science stuff that maybe everybody would not have volunteered for. Not that all that stuff is going to be done during this mission, but, you know, he's in this, he's committed to it. And, you know, we expect that it's going to return some pretty significant advances in how we understand human physiology and spaceflight. And you're part of that, the twin study, if you will. Uh, much has been made about this. Uh, what do you expect uh, will be expected of you uh, in terms of a ground-based subject, if you will, to compare to your identical twin brother? Well, I've already started, started doing some of this, you know, the, my, the expectations that are on me. And uh, even last year, I'd gone, you know, I made my first trip to Houston. I made another one here in 2015. I'll do others while he is in space. And then after he gets back. And what NASA does for me, I, I just give them a lot of data. You know, whether it's an MRI or an ultrasound or 20 tubes of blood or some other form of sample without going into detail. Uh, so I provide the data. There's about 10 different studies from a bunch of different universities. So, you know, this is pretty serious research when you have Harvard Medical School involved, Stanford, University of Pennsylvania, Johns Hopkins, and others. So I just, I just provide the data, and they tell me where I need to be and when. Finally, Mark, the key to a successful flight, pacing, being stoic, uh, wh what are the qualities that will make this a successful flight for your brother? Yeah, I think uh, approaching this as a marathon and not a sprint. Uh, you know, he is certainly committed to the mission of NASA, you know, the mission of our space program, this specific extra long duration mission. So commitment is really important. You know, hard work, but, you know, understanding that it's not forever, it's a year. And, uh, you know, he'll be back uh, hopefully before we all know it.